Half-Life and Radioactive Decay, Concepts and Calculations. All right, so let's talk a little bit about half-life. And in the process, we're going to discuss radioactive isotopes and what those are. Now, um, a given isotope can be radioactive um, and, and, a, and another one won't be radioactive. And so basically, that radioactivity is characteristic of that particular isotope. So for instance, some isotopes are stable indefinitely, like carbon-12, uh, while others are radioactive and decay through a characteristic form of emission, like we saw in some of those uh, nuclear equations. They can uh, decay by alpha particle emission, they can decay by beta particle emission, they can um, decay by positron emission. Now, the important part of this is that as time passes, less and less of that radioactive isotope will be present. And so because of that, the level of radioactivity also decreases. Half-life is a very specific concept. That is the amount of time it takes for one half of a radioactive isotope to decay. So for instance, if we start with, say, 60 grams of a radioactive isotope, after one half-life, 30 grams of that uh, radioactive isotope will remain. For any given specific radioactive isotope, that half-life is constant, so it's always the same. It's unaffected by conditions, and it's independent of the initial amount of that isotope. So in other words, the half-life is going to be the same whether you have 500 grams of a given isotope or only 100 grams or even 5 grams or even half a gram. That half-life is always going to be the same. So let's look at an example. We have a radioactive isotope of hydrogen, and that's called tritium. We have 100 grams of it and tritium has a half-life of 12.3 years. Now, after 12.3 years, then we will only have uh, 50 grams because half of it decayed from hydrogen-3 to helium-3 by emitting a, a beta particle. Now, if we let another 12.3 years go by, and that's going to make a total of 24.6 years, then another half of that tritium is going to uh, decay, and then we'll only have 25 grams. Let's let another 12.3 years go by, and now we only have 12 and a half grams. So with each successive half-life, we're cutting the amount remaining by half. So here's a plot showing that. So we start off with 100 grams. After the first half-life, we have 50 grams. Second half-life, 25 grams. Third half-life, uh, 12 and a half grams. We're going to cut that in half again and again and again. And notice how each time we have a half-life, the less and less of it, so it's a smaller and smaller amount. Radioactive decay is an exponential process, so it's going to be very, very fast at the very beginning at the low number of half-lives, and then that is going to tail off as it gets longer and longer. So let's look at an example for how to calculate the amount remaining after a certain number of half-lives. We can actually do this a couple of different ways. We can use this expression. So we have the amount remaining, and that's equal to the initial amount times, and this is one half to the number of half-life power. So if we had one half-life, that would be one. If we had three half-lives, that would be three. You could also use this equation where you have the amount remaining uh, equals the initial amount, which is the same here, and then you can divide that by two to the n power. So again, n is the number of half-lives that, that have passed. And that's the same for both of those equations. All right, so an example of this, let's look, the half-life of fluorine 20 is 11 seconds. Now, if a sample initially contains five grams of fluorine 20, how much remains after 44 seconds? So before I go on to the ne next slide, let's go ahead and just dissect this a little bit. Now, in this problem, we have been given the half-life, which is 11 seconds. We've been given 44 seconds as the amount of time that's elapsed. And then we have, of course, the initial amount. Now, one thing to really notice here is that if we take 11 seconds and if we multiply it by 4, we get 44 seconds. And so that tells us that we have exactly four half-lives that have passed. So let's look at how to use that information in a second. Okay, so now let's go ahead and, um, and basically fill in our expression. 
So we've already noted that 44 seconds is exactly four half-lives. So now we know what n is. That's going to be four. We know what the initial amount is, and that's going to be this five grams of fluorine 20. So we plug in everything, okay? We put this in our calculator, one divided by two, press enter, take that to the fourth power, that's going to be 1 over 16. You could also just do this separately and then multiply it by 5 grams. That would be fine also. Um, when you multiply these two together, you're going to get 0 0.313 grams. The other thing that we want to think about here is significant figures, as always. And so we have three sig figs here, three sig figs in both times, three sig figs in the initial amount. And so that's why we have three sig figs in our answer, because all three of our initial quantities have three significant figures. All right, so here's just a list of half-lives of various isotopes. So you can see some of them are really long, some of them are relatively short. Here's tritium that we just looked at, carbon-14, 5,730 years. Look at potassium-40, 1.26 times 10 to the ninth years, okay? Or we can also have the order of days, so 51 chromium, to about 27, 28 days. And just go down through here through the list, and you can just see um, all kinds of uh, all kinds of half lives for various isotopes. And another thing to remember about this: the, these half lives are constant for this given isotope, regardless of the conditions. So it doesn't matter how much we start with, and it doesn't matter any other condition. This half life will remain the same for each individual isotope. All right, so just to summarize, natural radioactive processes are characterized by half-life, and that's the time it takes for half of the material to decay radioactively. And we can calculate the amount of material left over after a certain number of half-lives using either of these two equations, just keeping in mind that n is the number of half-lives that have passed.